gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. This is the power of the cross. God's people had long awaited the coming of Christ. Suffering under the oppressive Roman regime, they found hope in the words of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thinking he would prepare an earthly kingdom where they would be free from Roman oppression, they prepared to welcome their new king into Jerusalem. A very large crowd spread cloaks and branches on the road as Jesus entered the city. Surrounding him, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest.
Jesus prepared a final meal with his disciples. He took some bread, gave thanks to God for it, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement sealed with my blood, which is poured out to redeem your souls. of that last meal was short-lived, for that very night Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter, one of his most loyal friends, denied him not once but three times. Knowing what lay ahead, Jesus withdrew to an olive grove to pray. Abba, Father, he cried out, please take this cup of suffering away from me, yet your will to be done, not mine.
The stillness of the night was shattered as soldiers came to arrest Jesus, whom Judas betrayed with a kiss. Jesus was brought before the Roman governor Pilate to stand trial. Pressured by angry crowds who had been incited by the chief priests, Pilate condemned Jesus to death by crucifixion. The soldiers took him away to a place called Golgotha, where they crucified him along with two criminals. Jesus was in the middle with one criminal on the right and one to his left, and Jesus said, for, for, them, for they know not what they do. The soldiers cast lots for his clothes. People passing by mocked him, shouting, he saved others, let him save himself. One of the criminals yelled at him, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other criminal said, we are receiving our justice, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingly power. And Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Standing by the cross were several women, including his mother, Mary, and the disciple he loved, John. When Jesus saw his mother, Jesus said to his mother and the disciple, Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took Mary into his home. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Knowing all was finished and to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I thirst. So a sponge full of vinegar was placed on a hyssop stalk held to his lips. After Jesus received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Then he breathed his last.
here for Jesus were watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and Mary the mother of Jesus. the people of the third day. We have hope. We know that Jesus lives through the power of the resurrection. Let us meditate in the upcoming weeks upon the final words of Jesus and bear witness to the power of the cross.
do want to thank the choir. They do such a great job. Um, Elizabeth uh, just can't even begin to imagine how much time she spends not only in the cantata but each week with the choir. Uh, thank you to Diane. I can't see everybody in the sound booth up there, but uh, Mike, Brian, yeah, and I can't see anybody else, but thank you. You guys did an awesome job up there this morning. I just have a, just a very short uh, challenge for you this morning, and as I've been thinking about what I wanted to, to say as we closed this morning, I've been thinking about our oldest child, uh, Emma. She's a sophomore at the University of Indianapolis. She is on spring break this week, and the way she chose to spend her spring break was to spend it doing a mission trip. And so she is in Mexico working with some orphanages, doing some uh, community service work. And really, we've always taught our kids to be somewhat adventurous in the Lord. And so for Emma, this is not her first mission trip. She has taken one to Arizona, and she worked at the White Mountain Apache Indian Tribe. She's been to Florida. She's been to Belize. She's been to Haiti. And this coming summer, she informed us she's thinking about doing a three-month mission trip uh, somewhere in the world. The, the school, the university will give her $1,500 to do this, but it could be in Africa, it could be in Asia, it could be in South America, really it could be anywhere. And as a parent, that kind of worries you, not knowing where your child is going to be for three months. This world can be a very scary place, but again, we've always encouraged her to be somewhat adventurous in the Lord, adventurous in the Spirit, and most definitely we see it in her life that she's kind of going where the, the Spirit is leading her. Again, it can be a little scary at times, but that's who she is. Uh, in John chapter 3, Jesus tells us, You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. As believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, every single one of us, we are all born in the Spirit. And you never know where the Spirit is going to lead you. We never know where the Spirit is going to blow us to. And over the season of Lent, as we approach Easter, as we approach the, the power of the cross, let us pay attention to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is alive, it's working, it's not only in the church, but it is in the life of every believer. It is in you, it is in me. And it is calling you, it is calling you to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus Christ. Now maybe the Spirit isn't leading you to, to Mexico or Haiti or, or Belize, maybe the Spirit is calling you to go across the street to a neighbor or to someone at work. Or maybe the, the Spirit is challenging you to get more into God's Word or more into prayer. Maybe the Spirit is calling you to give something up this season of Lent or to take something on. A challenge. But make no mistake about it. The power of the cross. It not only saves us, but it changes us. We are born again. Each of us. We have the Spirit of God inside of us. Where is it calling you to go? What is it calling you to do? Would you please stand with me for our closing prayer and benediction? Most gracious God, we just thank you so much for the power of the cross and the empty grave. And when we think about its power, it's simply not that we are saved, which is an amazing thing but it's also that we are changed. That we become your children, that we have the Spirit inside of us leading us and guiding us and, and who knows where it will take us. But my prayer over this Lenten season is that we will be courageous enough to follow it. Whether it is taking us to share the good news with a neighbor, a co-worker, a stranger, whether it's encouraging us to get more into your word or to prayer, whether it's encouraging us to give something up or to take something on, we, we pray that we will follow the Spirit as people of the Spirit. Again, thank you for the choir today, oh God. Thank you for their words. Thank you for being with us. 
And may your spirit lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the, the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the entire church be with each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you see someone from the choir afterwards, just tell them thank you for their ministry today. Have a great day.